Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be doing a Will I Buy It? I was planning on doing these videos every two weeks and then life got in the way. My bulldog passed away unexpectedly last month, so I took some time off and then I realized now that I'm back at it that I need to do a Will I Buy It? So I'm not gonna cover probably everything that I missed over the last like four or five weeks, but I will talk about the more recent uh, products, tell you if I'm gonna pick them up, if I got them in PR, if I already bought them, or if I'm just not interested. Interested. I tend to be pretty blunt in these so I'm just gonna shoot it straight and tell you how I feel about these new makeup releases also I will link all the makeup that I'm wearing today down below as well as every product that I talk about I get a lot of comments about what makeup I'm wearing and I have started to link everything down below so if you're wondering what's on my eyes or my lips or whatever it is I will have all those links down below I do try to also link my shirts if I can and then sometimes my jewelry so another note there's like a windstorm going on so if you hear it it sounds like my house is going to literally fall over I, there's moments where I'm like oh like I'm talking and it it's alarming to me so if you hear huge gusts of wind it's like 50 degrees here the wind is blowing like crazy so that's what that is and then the second side note I took off my nails I soaked them off and I'm gonna give my nails a rest my little chubby nubs are just living their best life I feel like a five-year-old boy but what can I say I've had acrylics on for so long I really just want to give them a break and they are paper thin they are paper thin, so I definitely need to let them breathe. I don't know how long I'll make it because I just really love having my nails done, but they needed a break. So if you're new here, I hope you subscribe. If you like these videos, give them a thumbs up because I will definitely keep doing them. I think you guys said you liked them once every two weeks or so, and I've rambled on enough, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Hello. I just never got your message. Sorry. Do you have anything to say to everybody? What do you want me to say? I don't know, you got no jokes? No. Sorry guys. We don't have a semen joke, we don't have a DSL joke, like we don't have anything inappropriate to say today. Yeah, we're a little under the weather. Alrighty, I well. Jokingly. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. So I want to start out with the products I actually have here with me so I can show you them, give you my first impressions. Some of these I bought and some of them were sent in PR, so I'll tell you as we go. But the first thing I wanted to mention was the brand new Olaplex Number no. 4 Blonde Enhancer Toning Shampoo. So when this was sneak peeked, I knew immediately that I was going to buy it, so I did pick this up from Sephora. It is $28 and it's a toning shampoo that strengthens, hydrates, and neutralizes brassiness while keeping your hair hydrated from roots to ends. Ends. Basically, they say to leave it on for one to three minutes or up to five minutes for an intense tone. So I really like this because it's very thin, it lathers, and it's very intense. This is one of those that I can get in and out of the shower, and I mentioned this in my favorites video. My Ride or Die Purple Shampoo has been the Amica Bust Your Brass, which I still really love but it takes like five to 10 minutes to tone my hair. It just takes a little bit longer and sometimes when I have shit to do, honestly, and I just wanna get in and out, maybe I have to film or I have to get somewhere, I don't wanna spend an extra 10 minutes in the shower just letting it soak into my hair. This is much quicker. I leave it on for about two to three minutes and I get the nice silver tone that you see right here. The only thing I will say is it's not hydrating. I don't think the Amica is hydrating. I have never tried a purple shampoo that's really hydrating. They typically are drying so when they claim that it's hydrating that's my only kind of qualm about it that it's not hydrating it's just like a typical purple shampoo so if you're looking for something to really tone the yellow or brassiness out of your hair this is a great option a little goes a long way and as I said two three minutes and you're done even if you have really stubborn you know yellow brassy hair you could leave it on for like five minutes so it's quick and it lathers and it does the job, but it's not hydrating, so make sure that you condition. I also saw a couple people in the uh, Sephora reviews saying that they mix it. So you could mix it with like a hydrating shampoo, half and half if you wanna kinda tone it down a little bit, but I really like it, glad I picked it up, and it's one of those things that's really nice for me to get in and out of the shower and get my hair toned. Next up, we have a brand new perfume that was basically dropped out of nowhere from Ariana Grande. So Ariana Grande Cloud has been a, favorite of a lot of people for a long time my 
myself included, and she dropped the Cloud Intense. So this is $65, you do get 3.4 ounces, there was no option for a smaller size, and it has every single note of Cloud, except for there's added on Dry Cashmere and Embrox. So I'm not familiar enough with you know, different notes and scents to know what that smells like. But I knew that I loved the original cloud, so I picked this up from Ulta. So you do have the little cloud here. I honestly don't really mess with this. I just take it out, and this is what the bottle looks like. So I've been wearing this for the past few days, and I wanna tell you my thoughts. This smells almost identical to the original cloud upon first spraying it, but when it dries down, I get a little bit more musk and creaminess from this one, very, very, small difference. The biggest difference I've noticed is that this wears a lot better. So I sprayed this on one arm and then I sprayed Cloud Original on the other and I just kind of wore it throughout the day to see, you know, what the difference would be and this one I could smell all throughout the day, just one spray. The original Cloud, it was fading after a few hours and then even the next morning I kind of, you know, smelled both arms to see the difference. I could still smell this. Again, it had faded but I could still smell the intense and I could not smell the cloud at all. So if you already have the cloud, you wouldn't need this just because they really do smell almost identical. But if you haven't tried cloud, I would just go for the intense and I probably won't buy the original cloud again because this just has a better projection. It just lasts longer. It's a little bit stronger. You have to use less of it and it does have a really nice creamy dry down. I kind of wish it would have been a little bit different just because for those of us that already have cloud, it is a little bit different, but it's not different enough for me to recommend you guys go out and buy this if you already have like a full bottle of cloud. So if you've tried cloud in the past and it didn't wear well on you or it wore off, you might want to look into the intense. But overall, my thoughts are I like both of them. They smell very similar. This one just lasts longer. It's a little bit creamier, a little bit sweeter, but really the longevity just is the biggest difference that I see. So next, I'm actually wearing some of these products on my eyes and lips right now. This is a new collaboration with Ashley Strong and Morphe. So this includes a Magic Artistry palette, which is what I have on my eyes. Also has lip duos. There's glosses and lip liners. And then there's the Cake Liner palette, which really intrigued me. I didn't use it today, but I'm excited to give it a go. It is available now, and I will link it at Ulta, I believe, and the Morphe website. I still have a code with Morphe. It's Babs beauty but I think most of you will probably just grab it on Ulta if you do. So I wanted to show you the palette because I have to say I really like this packaging. I'm not familiar with Ashley Strong but she's gorgeous from what I've looked at. So this is what the outer packaging looks like and honestly the color story really made me like want to play with it. It gave me those really you know green grungy pukey mustard vibes and I actually really like the look that I came up with today. I didn't struggle with any of these and I was just thinking about how I struggled so hard with the greens from that NARS palette. Uh, I used the same base I always use today and I didn't struggle with these greens and I used this one, this one, this one, I used a little bit of this one, used this. I mean I used a lot from this palette and I thought that it was beautiful. I mean I like the look that I came up with. I thought it was easy to use. And then I have this cake liner palette. This is interesting because if you've heard me talk about how I like to use the Natasha Denona cream to powder shadows as liner, this is kind of giving me a similar vibe. Now I haven't touched it, but look at the tones in here. So basically it just says wet your brush and use it as liner. Let me swatch. Okay, so they're not creams that, oh wait, that's interesting. They seem really sheer, like I tried to swatch it and nothing was coming off. So I wonder if because they are that cake liner, let me let me wet a brush, hold on. Okay, so I have a wet and angled brush into the black. Yep, it does, that's interesting. So when you try to swatch these or you look at them and you're like, oh, that's just like an eyeshadow, it's not because they don't swatch, but when you wet your brush, they become, you know, like a liner. So I'm really intrigued to try these. I think she did a great job on the colors, very beautiful like fall tones. 
There's also lip duos. I'm wearing this lip liner in Gilded Spirit. It's a gorgeous, just nude. And there's actually a matching gloss. Now, I didn't use the gloss today, but let's just go ahead and swatch. So the glosses actually have some pigment to them, and I love Morphe lip liners. It's probably one of my favorite things from them if you haven't tried them. So that's the one duo right there. And there's also a pink-toned duo. It's like a berry, and this is tourmaline soul yeah it's like a berry it's actually not pink it's like a berry burgundy let's see what the lip gloss swatches like yeah so it's kind of like that vibe of a lighter gloss in the center overall i love the colors honestly of this collection and this is one of those collections that i saw it online and didn't really think much of it but when i actually got it in person and i played with it i actually really like it and i'm excited to use that cake liner palette the last product I wanna mention that I actually have here with me was sent to me in PR from M Cosmetics, and this is their newest release. These are called the Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadows. So they're single shadows, they retail for $26 each, and they are available now. They're seven different shades, and they describe them as a metallic stardust eyeshadow with shimmer and a unique ultra creamy and buildable powder. So I got these, and I've actually worn these on my eyes a couple times, I just haven't had a chance to film with them. I wanna show you the packaging and some swatches. The packaging reminds me of the Tower 28 blushes, that clear acrylic. This is the shade Star Child, and when I initially saw these and received them, I thought they would be like a ColourPop Super Shock, but they're not. These are creamier. There's really not a powder feel to them, in my opinion. And when you touch them very lightly, you get full pigment. So if you go in and start rubbing your finger in, you're going to just get a big chunky mess. I would just use your finger to apply. So I'm gonna swatch this for you. So you literally just barely touch it. And this is the color payoff. So this is Star Child. When I wore these, I didn't have any creasing. I've only worn them twice though, just kind of playing around. This next shade I think is really pretty. This one is Luna, which is almost like a silvery champagne color and then we have this copper tone which is called Helios. I only pulled out four just because I just didn't want to have you know too many shades. I like to not touch stuff and donate it if I can. Ooh, that's beautiful. It's like a copper shade and then the last shade that I chose was Wish which just seems like a typical champagne color. So these are interesting formula. I really don't know what to compare them to. Maybe like the hourglass scattered lights, the little pot shadows, something like that, but these feel creamier. And on the lid, I don't think that they look like a glitter or anything like that. I mean, they definitely are metallic, but they're not overly intense. They're more of like a one and done type of shadow. So I think they're beautiful. I really wanna play around more, but so far I think I've worn this shade and then this shade, just playing around. And they didn't crease, they were very easy to apply, I didn't have any fallout. And you can see they kind of just like stick to your fingers, but just be, careful because my first thought was to like rub in there and it got a little bit chunky so really you don't have to apply any pressure to get them to show up i think they're beautiful so i will link them down below if you're interested so now we're gonna move on to stuff I don't have, but maybe I bought it and it's on the way, or maybe I don't want it. So let's start out with what just dropped this morning, which was the Pat McGrath Celestial Odyssey Palette. So this is her 18 pan eyeshadow palette for holiday. It is $78. I already picked it up because I bought the one from last year and I really like the formula. It has smaller pans, but I'm okay with that because I have such a large collection. I think it's a great way to try Pat McGrath if you don't want to spend the $130 for her other palettes. She also did release in this collection some blush and highlight trios, also some quads, a highlighter that I am dying to get my hands on, but it's not available yet. There's also some lip balms, so there's kind of some bundles and different things, but as of today, the only thing available was a couple bundles and the eyeshadow palette, so I did grab that and I will link it down below. From the past and what I've seen, I feel like she's gonna release the rest of this in a few days or a week or so, so I'll keep you guys updated on my community tab. But I definitely picked this up. I think $78, of course, is pricey, but you get 18 shades and you get to try the Pat formula. And I think some of these shimmers in here look gorgeous, just really beautiful metallic. And I remember the palette from last year, I really liked it as well. So I already grabbed it, I will link it down below. 
Next up, we have a new product from Milk Makeup that's intriguing. This is called the Hydro Grip Eyeshadow and Concealer Primer. It says it's an invisible hydrating primer that smooths skin and locks down color to prevent creasing, fading, and smudging. $24 available now. So this is interesting. I probably wouldn't use it as an eye primer because it does look clear. I like to have something that covers my microblading and gives me that even base. I really like like a paint pot or concealer stuff like that so I wouldn't use it for that but I am intrigued for the under eye because I've mentioned recently that I have issues with fine lines and just dryness now I will say I've been loving the Anastasia concealer it really just helps smooth everything out and hydrate but I would be curious to try this under the eyes to give a soft focus effect like would it really work well with concealer? Would it bunch up underneath? Would it be too sticky and make it weird? I don't know, but I'm interested. I do get PR sometimes from Milk, so if it doesn't come in a little while, I might actually grab it during the friends and family sale or the VIB sale from Sephora, but that one's got me intrigued. We also have a new product from Beauty Blender, which is interesting because they are expanding into makeup now. I did recently haul one of their blushes, and now they have the new Bounce Skin Tint, a radiant skin tint. It says, buildable, long wear, natural finish with light to medium coverage. It says it has the texture of a serum and the skin benefits of a serum to give a skin-like finish. Glass packaging with a dropper, 20 flexible tone adapting shades, $29 each. I believe it's available now at Sephora. I'm a little bit interested because it says it's light medium coverage. I like to have something that has a little bit of coverage. Like I need a little bit of coverage with a skin tint like the Fenty Ease Drop or the NARS Radiant Tinted Moisturizer. I don't do well with like the Glossier skin tint. I need a little bit more, like I, I can't do sheer. I need light to medium. But the one thing I don't know is anything that says it's like a serum usually doesn't work for me. It usually just feels heavy or it slips and slides or it gets super oily on me. So I'm probably gonna pass on picking this up. And honestly, we're going into to the fall months and I would typically just wear like what I've been wearing, which is like a matte foundation. I don't typically wear like tinted moisturizers, I guess as much in the fall and winter. So I think it's interesting. I would love to see some reviews, but I don't think I'm gonna personally pick it up. Moving on to something I actually did pick up and I'm a little surprised that I did. Really nobody asked me to, but I really wanna review it for you guys and I think it's a little bit intriguing and I'll tell you why. So this is the new palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills for holiday 2021 and this is the Primrose palette. It has 12 shades of a rose inspired color story and larger pan sizes plus two blushes. This is available now. I don't know what I paid for it. I wanna say $45. Let me, let me look that up actually. Okay, so it actually was $50. $5. I got it off their website, but it is coming to retails. I will link it wherever I can find it down below. Here's what I found interesting, and I don't know if it's just the promo photos. I really liked the Modern Renaissance, but I have to say that I really am not in love with the ABH eyeshadow formula. I find them to be a little bit powdery, and the shimmers feel a little bit lackluster. These look different to me, and it could just be because they're bigger pan sizes or just different packaging, but I'm hoping that maybe the formula may be a little bit different. And I actually like the blushes because when you look at them, it looks like there's a really light peachy neutral one, but then they've added in this shade called Saddle, which looks like a, almost like a bronzer, almost like a burnt terracotta bronzy shade. Now, do I think that everybody will be able to wear those blushes? Probably not, so I, I'd have to see it in person. Just upon looking at the photos, I'm assuming they went for a lighter shade and then a more rich shade, hopefully to cover a lot of bases. But I do think it's hard when you're doing a palette one color story, it's just not gonna work for everyone. So I'd have to see it in person. I haven't seen any reviews or any anything other than the promo photos. Uh, I'm excited to try it out and give it a go. I think it does look beautiful. I just don't know if I agree with the blushes just because if it's not deep enough to work for everyone or light enough to work for everyone, it's kind of frustrating on that front. I wish brands would just offer different options or just not put you know face you know blushes and bronzers in an eyeshadow palette. 
So next up, I see a new release from LYS Beauty, and that is a black-owned brand that became available at Sephora a few months back. I bought a lot of their cream blushes. I bought a lot of their products, and the cream blushes were my favorite. So this is the Glow Beyond Collection. It includes multi-use liquid highlighters in three different colorways, and then it has the pressed highlighter powder in three different colorways, and then a bright glow and hydrate serum. It's available now. It looks like the highlighters are both $19 each, and I don't see a price on the serum. So I really love the packaging of this brand. I love the aesthetic of it. I like that they have that triangle, I guess, packaging. It's very unique. I'm eyeing one of the pressed powder highlighters. I just know personally I don't use liquid highlighters enough to justify it. They look beautiful, but it probably wouldn't be something I would use. But I do have on my Sephora Loves list one of the powder highlighters, probably in the lightest shade. So again, I'm kind of like trying to hold off for the friends and family sale or the VIB, but I'll probably will end up picking up one of the powder highlighters. Another product that is in my cart, and it's, it's killing me not to buy it right now, but I'm trying to be good and wait for my discount. This is new from Melt Cosmetics, and these are the Perfectionist Ultra Precision Lip Pencils. They have, I think, seven different shades here, mostly like nude and brown, and then one red. So these are available now because I already have them in my cart, and it, like I said, it's killing me. If you've been watching my channel, I have recommended the Melt Cosmetics Lip Liner and Foxy and Headbang forever. They are such a good formula. So I'm not sure if they're replacing their old formula with this formula. They're $19 each here, and I have my eye on like four shades. Just because I love their other formula, so I'm hoping it will be similar. And there's some really beautiful shades, like this one shade Sepia just looks really unique, and I love different tones of brown lip liners. So these are definitely in my cart, ready to check out. I probably will end up buying like three of those because I love the original, but I am unclear as to if these are replacing the previous formula because I already love that formula, so I don't really know why they would change it. So I'd have to get clarification on that. I tried to look on their socials and I couldn't find anybody asking, so maybe I'll DM them and see what they say. Okay, it wouldn't be a will I buy it if we don't talk about ColourPop. ColourPop releases so much stuff, I honestly cannot keep track of it, it's just so much. But they did just drop their Hocus Pocus collection round two. And apparently they restocked round one. Now I did like the first one from last year, I thought it was beautiful, the colors were rich. This one, is not really doing it for me. So this new collection has a 12 pan eyeshadow palette for $22, fresh kiss lip creams for $9 each in three shades, super shock shadows for $7, a hand mirror and a candle, which I know everybody's saying this, but I mean, the candle looks adorable and it's probably the thing that I think is the cutest. I just think this looks Eh, like last year's was so much better and I feel like that's kind of the consensus I'm seeing. The color story on this just is kind of blah. I don't know. I feel like they dropped the ball on this for Hocus Pocus. I'm not inspired by it. I don't want to pick it up. If anything, if you didn't get the one from last year, I would just recommend getting that one. So I'll link them both down below. I do get PR from ColourPop sometimes, but I wouldn't buy this just because I just feel like they did so much better last year and it's a little disappointing to see what they've done with round two. Now we also have a new collaboration with Morphe that's available now, and I have to say this is really cute. This is the Sweet and Sour Collection collaboration with Morphe and Sour Patch Kids. So in here there is the Sour Then Sweet palette for 22, Set It Sweet Continuous Setting Mist for 18, Pucker Party Lip Gloss for 10, a sponge set for 19, and then lip scrubs for 10. I think that the setting spray and the sponges are the cutest things. Like I would be just wanting to try that just for the scent of the setting spray. I'm assuming if the setting spray is Sour Patch Kids collaboration, it has a special scent. The palette looks cute and fun, but I really honestly just think the sponges are adorable. The packaging is adorable. I am on their PR, so if I get it, I will review it for you guys. But I think this is a cute collaboration. It's one of those like Elf Chipotle. It's just kind of like funny and cute. And I actually like the sponges from that e.l.f. collection, so I would be interested to try these sponges from this one. So next up, we have a new eyeshadow palette from Gucci Beauty, and when you hear the price, you're gonna be like, what? 
So this is the new 12-pan uh, eyeshadow palette. It's the Floral Eyeshadow Palette from Gucci Beauty. This was actually available a few days ago. I posted it on my community tab, and then they pulled it, so I think it accidentally got posted, which, you know, that happens on some retailers. So it says, a nature-inspired, including three different textures, three metallic with a chrome finish, two satin, and seven matte shades. It has a gold trim, a mirror, and a vintage-inspired floral pattern on the packaging. But this is going to run you $149. $149 doll hairs for this. What? Uh, the packaging kills me. I love it. I like the packaging. Literally, I was like, I want it. And then I saw the shades and I was like, eh. And then I saw the price and I was like, what? <laughs> so that's going to be a no for me just for the price and the shades. But the packaging, like I need them to do like a blush palette or a highlight palette with that packaging. It's gorgeous. I just really can't spend $149 on a palette that I don't even know if it's going to be a good formula because I've never tried Gucci eyeshadow. So while I think it's cute and it's bougie, like it's bougie, honey, that's so cute. Like the packaging literally is adorable, but $149 is going to be a no for me. Next up, Hourglass did drop their 2021 palettes. So it looks like we have three different palettes this year. I know in the past we have all kind of called out Hourglass for not being inclusive. They don't listen. It's like every year we get the same beige palette and it's frustrating. This year, I feel like we're moving in the right direction, but still we need to keep moving. You know, it's like, okay, we're doing a little bit better, but really we should have done a lot better a long time ago. So in here there's three different palettes and it looks like there's a light palette with blush, bronzers, highlighters, and then there's sort of like a medium tan palette with more punchy blushes, bronzer, and highlighters. And then there is a three pan palette that looks like it's for deeper skin tones. Again, I haven't seen these in person, I've just seen the online photos. I actually wasn't gonna get this and then when I saw the punchy blushes in the medium palette, I did buy it. And I'm actually excited for it because I love a punchy blush and it just looks so beautiful and from the reviews that I've seen it's very pigmented which is not really like hourglass for blushes usually hourglass is more like a light dusting and like a little you know satin finish so I'm interested to try this I think the packaging looks beautiful too I know some people didn't like the packaging but for me in the past they had that metallic packaging that got really dirty and this one looks like it will just look nicer overall in the long run so I'm glad that we're making strides to include like a light, you know, a medium and a deep option, but I feel like we still could have done more. Like, can we get to the point where we come out with like six palettes, you know, five palettes, like really go there and give different options. But I do think it's a step in the right direction and I am excited to try that palette. So uh, I will link these down below if you're interested, but I really do need to look up reviews um, with creators that use that deeper palette because again, I'm just looking at these photos and I really don't know how deep they go or if they're really gonna work on deep skin tones. So I need to look up some reviews and see if it really is deep enough or if it's just like the colors that they show in the photo shoot because sometimes it's really hard to tell from the product images. So if you've used it, picked it up or seen reviews, let me know what you think or what you've heard about the three pan deeper palette. I'd love to know if they actually did take it there and listen to consumers and give us a deeper option. So next up, there's a collection from Sigma Beauty that I'm seeing a lot of people really excited about. This is the Disney collaboration, Sigma and Cinderella. So it's available now. It has an eyeshadow palette for $49, a cheek duo palette for 35, a lip duo for 29, and then a brush set where you can get the whole collection for 156. There's a bunch of codes as well, so you can look for creator codes to get 10 or 15% off. I do think this is a beautiful collection, but I think I'm gonna pass on it only because I feel like there's other you know palettes that I'm more excited about, like the ones I had mentioned to you, the Hourglass Face Palette, the ABH palette that I picked up. You know, I'm more excited about just other collaborations, the Pat McGrath that I just bought, and this is cute. I think it's it's well done, especially for a Disney collab. I feel like lately, I've really been seeing a lot of Disney collabs that I think are just kind of like, I don't know, like they didn't really try half-assed, if you will, and that's kind of like, ooh, Disney's just kind of like throwing their name on whatever. This one actually looks nice and cohesive. The brushes are really cute. They go with the theme, but me personally, I just don't see myself using it, so I'm gonna pass on this. 
Next up, it looks like NARS released another cheek palette available now. This is called the High Profile Cheek Palette and it has six different shades of blushes in it. It retails for $59. So I have to say I really love the palettes that NARS does but I do wish that they would do more and expand. Now, the last time I said that about a palette, it was a quad, and I actually ended up like really enjoying it. So it's not that I don't enjoy them, but I feel like if you have three or four of these palettes, it can get repetitive because it's like, well, I already have this palette and this palette and this palette. I will say that these shades, now just looking at the photos on here, they look like they have depth, right? So they're not like just all super light. I mean, it looks like there's almost like a bronze shade, a berry shade, you know, creamsicle shade in there. Let's see if orgasm is in there because you know, if orgasm's in there, I'm going to have a bone to pick. Oh my gosh. I am shocked to tell you that there's not an orgasm blush in here. Thank you. Hallelujah. Because I feel like we don't need orgasm in every single palette. I say this in every time I talk about NARS orgasm. It's cute but we already have it. So let's just keep it pushing and do something different. So the fact that it's not in here actually makes me more like, okay, I can see the value in this because every single palette with 50 orgasms in it, it's like we have, we're drenched in orgasm and we will never go through that blush. It's like Benefit Hula, Pillow Talk Charlotte Tilbury. Like it's like the horse and you just keep like beating it. And you're like, okay, like we know that you love this, got it, great, but let's do something different. So I'm actually happy to see that Orgasm Blush is not in there. So I think this is a cute palette. I love the embossing that they do and the packaging actually looks really beautiful on the outside as well. I think it would be a beautiful gift or if you've never tried a NARS blush or you don't own a palette, I think this would be gorgeous. I get PR from them, so if it comes to me, we will definitely try it out. I probably wouldn't purchase it myself though because to be honest, I'm drowning in blushes. Speaking of blushes, I'm scrolling through the Sephora app at the new stuff and Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Blush Duos are available now. Uh, they're gonna run you 90 doll hairs, okay? 90, nine zero dollars for a blush duo. I just can't, <laughs> I can't. I'm a blush fanatic, but I just can't. And I can't help but think, these all look eerily close. I mean, like, really close. There's not enough dimension. There's a couple that look different, but they all really look like a peach. I know Tom Ford's expensive, but $90. I just can't get there. I love blush, but I just can't justify that price. And I honestly, I've spent crazy money on perfumes and eyeshadows and whatever, but I think beyond the money, they're not really grabbing me. Like none of the colors are really speaking to me or making me like, ooh, that looks unique or it's really like a punchy color or whatever. I feel like I've seen these colors 500 times over. So if you're interested in them, I will link them down below, but I just, I can't get there for $90. And to finish off, I wanna talk about a couple sets I'm seeing for holiday. We have the Olaplex Healthy Hair Essentials Set. This is four full-size products for $60. It's available now, and in here you get the shampoo and conditioner, the number three, which is my favorite, and then the bonding oil number seven. Highly recommend this. If you've been wanting to try Olaplex, this is a great value. I think it's $83 and it's on sale for, or it's bundled for 60. The shampoo and conditioner is great. A little goes along way. The number three hair mask is my number one pick for them. It really just helps heal your hair. It's one of those you want to use like twice a week. You don't want to overdo it, but it is a staple, especially if, if you have like damaged hair, dry hair, bleached hair, and then you get the number seven bonding oil, which I liked as well. That also has a heat protection in it. So this is a great set. I'm really glad that they included the number three because that's my top pick. And I think it's a really good deal because they're all full size. I'm also seeing a new set from Forever Mood Candle. Candles. That's Jackie Ina's brand and I love her candles and this is a limited edition exclusive You get four mini size candles for $50 and these are her core collection So these are the pastel colorway candles that she came out with when she first launched her brand now I will say that these are more of the summer kind of spring scents if you want to try her candles, but you want more of like the fall Christmas scents, I would get the Send Nudes mini set. So I'll link it down below, but it's the one with the brown candles. Those are very much like fall, Christmas, vanilla, cozy, cinnamon, you know, the holiday type scents. So I'll link both down below, but I wanted to mention that new set is available if you were interested in trying it. 
And then lastly, I want to finish off with this set from Too Faced. This is the Hangover Pillow Balm Hydrating and Nourishing Lip Treatment Set. $35. It says it's a $68 value. So this is for the holidays. It includes four travel sizes. And it's interesting because these are scents that you don't get anywhere else. Two of them are. So you get the Clear, which smells like coconut. You get the Watermelon Kiss. And then you get two that are limited edition, which is Frost Yourself. And it has a shimmer to it but it smells like peppermint. So they show swatches, it actually does look like glittery. And then the other one is Candy Cane Bang. I couldn't say that, Candy Cane Bang. <sighs> That's a little weird, like Gang Bang, Candy Cane Bang, I don't know. And this is a Candy Cane Pink that smells like peppermint and it actually looks like it has, you know, nice pigment to it in the swatches. These are my favorite lip balms. Like, I know there's a ton of Laneige sets which I saw on Sephora and I still like the, 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 the <laughs> I still like the, I can't speak, I still enjoy the Laneige, but I think just the way that the Too Faced coats my lips, my lips feel so soft, they're never really chapped, and I like that I don't have to dig my finger in. I just like how thick they are and they coat the lips. They just feel incredible and I like the ones that are tinted too because you can use them during the day if you want just like a little bit of a pink on your lips. So I would highly recommend this set if you're looking for lip balms and I like that they're travel sizes because you can throw one in your purse, one on your nightstand, you know, one where you get ready at your vanity. And I think I am going to grab this because those two shades that have the sparkle and the like pink and then also, you know, the peppermint scent, I really want to try those for myself. $35 is a great price, so I'll link it down below as well, but I definitely want to pick that up. All right, guys, so that is everything for this Will I Buy It. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I didn't want to go too far back because I know I had missed a couple weeks and, I mean, we would have been here for two hours talking about stuff. So I tried to really focus on the new stuff or stuff that I thought you guys would be interested in. So I will link everything down below. Let me know what you want me to review the most of the products that I picked up or maybe something that I'm passing over if you really want to review. I will link my makeup again, my top and all of that and everything that I talked about today down below in my description box if you're interested. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of these, if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.